Hi, I'm Mark Wheat from The Current and I'm really excited because I get to go to Iceland. Not the first time for me to visit the country, but for the first time to experience the Iceland Airwaves Festival, which takes place from November the 1st to the 5th. But what's special about our trip is we're going to be the first radio station broadcasting from the second city of Iceland. That's Akureyri. I'm going to get really good at pronouncing that after I introduce my guests because I've been joined to get a little prep for my adventure by two representatives from the great country of Iceland. In fact, the Consulate General to Minnesota, Dr. Orn Anna, and his very special assistant, Catherine Sigurdata. Very close. Very close. <laughs> you guys are always up. That's the first thing I've experienced about Iceland is you're very good with the English language yourself and you're very forgiving to all of us. So how do I say hello and greet people and say thank you? So the easiest way is to say hi. That's very um, acceptable. Acceptable. Everyone says hi Good. Good. and bye. Okay. If you want to be a little bit more formal, you can say um, kontisek. 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 I love how you pull it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can do the, the, full the voice back. Back. The trick with that is there's a different kontisek is if you're um, addressing a female. Okay. And kontisek if you're addressing a male. See right there. I'm there. I know. I'm there. So hi is very safe. Hi is very safe. Yeah. And tuck is thank you, right? Tuck, yeah. That's very I know very that good. from a cigarose album. Like, yeah. Oh. Tuck. <laughs> <laughs> Another one for uh, goodbye is bless. Oh, really? Yeah. Which is close bless. to bless. bless. Yeah, it's like bless, bless. you. Bless is oh, a good way perfect. to say goodbye. B-L-E-S-S. What are the Icelandic people like to eat? And is it different from Reykjavik? Has Akarari got a special cultural difference? Icelanders, of course, at one time uh, had mostly fish to eat yeah. and lamb, yeah. but they've taken quite well to the American fast food. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be okay? Is that what you're suggesting? You're going to be in familiar territory. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that's good. I would, I would go in, in Akurere, I would go for ice cream. Really? Yeah. See, they that's eat, another good one. I love ice cream. Ice cream. But then you'll definitely have to get a hot dog. <laughs> A hot dog and a, ice cream. A hot dog and a bun, and they put raw onion, fried onions, um, ketchup, mustard, yeah. and like remoulade. See, that sounds like the sort kind of stuff that you'd be eating either at a soccer stadium mm -hmm. or at a music stadium, and those are the two things that I love more than anything on the planet. Perfect. And your country, for some reason, is strong in both areas. I mean. Obviously, as we say, the Iceland Airways Festival has become a global phenomena. Mm -hmm. um, and the Iceland national soccer team just qualified uh, for the World Cup, and they're the smallest nation ever to do so. So, Catherine, do you have some magic sauce? Is it the romelade that you, you put on the hot dogs? What about the culture has, has created these significant events? About 20 years ago, maybe 17 years ago, they started working on teenage drinking and drug use. And one of their uh, methods was to keep kids busy after school. A lot of kids went to soccer, a lot of kids did music. And I think we're seeing a byproduct of right. that. And they, they did make great strides with, with decreasing teenage drinking and smoking yeah. and drug use. One of the questions we wanted to ask about the Iceland Airways Festival, was it created to attract a lot of people from other parts of the world? Or is it something that you wanted to create so that the people from Iceland could see these bands that they wouldn't normally get the chance to see? If I remember correctly, it started with Iceland Air being a major sponsor. Yes. So I think it was meant to bring tourism to the country. The weather might not be super nice, so, right. so you <laughs> I have was going to find ask you, the I don't cover. Know you, will I get to see some northern lights though from Akarari? Yeah, you might. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, I've never seen them before. so that Just would... go outside the, the light pollution a little bit. And there you go. Very get out of the city. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I thought it was crazy when I first came over to America that people asked me, because I'm from England, and they asked me, do I know Paul McCartney? I have to say, though, in Iceland, it seems like everyone knows Bjork or should know Bjork. So, Katrine, did you ever hang out with Bjork? I didn't, but I know her sister. That's close enough. Yeah. That's good. Yes. And do you know any Icelandic musicians now who are playing in the festival? Yep. Uh, my cousin's husband is playing with Ausgate. Oh, cool. He's the keyboard player for, for in his band. 
No way! Yeah. He's one that we're going to try and see at Absolutely. the festival. You should. So. He's really good. And uh, uh, my cousin's daughter is in a band, Nachtsuch, and they um, actually can't play at the, uh, the festival because they're too busy recording their next album. Wow, that sounds huge. Like, if you're too busy <laughs> to play this festival, we need to hear that album. Yeah. So send us a copy when she gets done. That's awesome. I'm even more excited to go to Iceland now for the Iceland Airways Festival, thanks to Honorary Consulate to Minnesota from Iceland, Dr. Anna, yeah, <laughs> and his special assistant, Katrin Sigurdotta. Yes. Bless. 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 Bless.